Business Sidekick. Hello guys, it's Justyna, live chat content writer, and you're listening to Business Sidekick, a podcast dedicated to growing your online business and guiding you through an e-commerce jungle. My today's guest is Chris Terhav, a co-founder of Toggle. Since the majority of the Toggle team works remotely from across the globe, Chris's job is to oversee everything from development to onboarding and marketing. He's also responsible to hire people and deal with all problems that remote working can cause. So, in today's episode, you'll learn everything about remote working, about its pros and cons, and and we'll try to dispel some myths about remote working. So, enjoy! Business Sidekick! Hello, Krister. It's nice to meet you. Uh, can you please tell me something about yourself and your role at Toggle? Well, I will start with Toggle first because it's, uh, it's a bit more interesting. Oh, come on! <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, well, Toggle is uh, actually a pretty, pretty old company now because uh, we actually started out um, way back in 2000s. But we started out with a different company back then, and it was a company for um, uh, providing uh, services for different companies around Estonia. And uh, of course, that meant that uh, we had a lot of clients, we had a lot of projects and so on. And um, uh, well, it wasn't so uh, easy going, so we needed to be more productive. And so we started actually looking around for a good time tracker. And uh, there wasn't any. So, of course, we being a software company, we built our own. And um, that meant that we were happily tracking at the time. And uh, then some of our clients came back to us and said, hey, these are really cool reports you have there. Can we have these as well? And we said that no, <laughs> because it was a very, it was a very bad uh, tool at the time. It was... Um, it was uh, some Windows desktop application and it was crashing all the time and so on. <laughs> but we said to ourselves that um, we have been like thinking of uh, having a, uh, a product for us uh, for a long time now. So maybe we should just build one because there seems to be interest. And so uh, uh, the toggle was born uh, in year 2006. Uh, so it's uh, already 10 years old. But uh, back then it was actually a, rather like a hobby project. Uh, so we, we still had our own clients, we had own projects, we had uh, all the resources dedicated for like, um, well, earning money. Uh, Toggle itself wasn't very successful back then because it only had like, I think, uh, two, three thousand uh, paying users or something like that. But uh, it wasn't also unsuccessful to just kill it off. So uh, we were just like, muddling along and uh, and then uh, in year 2008 when the big uh, banking recession kicked in uh, unfortunately that meant that uh, our uh, consultancy business uh, lost uh, pretty much all the all the revenue uh, that was there so wait sorry <laughs> not a problem yeah uh, so uh, we lost like 50% of revenue overnight and uh, so we had to do something with people. We had like people uh, sitting in the office doing nothing so we thought that hey, we have this product, you know, let's just uh, well develop, develop this small. And that's actually uh, what we, well, we actually call the birthday of Toggle which is like uh, uh, early 2009. And from that uh, that year, we actually have been uh, growing, uh, well, three times a year, pretty much, every year. And uh, and it uh, it seemed that we actually hit the, uh, hit the stride. And uh, since 2012, we actually we actually ditched all the other other projects we have, and from that onwards, we have been just pure product company. And that's what we what we are at now. It's 2017. We've got uh, well, uh, in last accounts, we've got close to 300,000 uh, daily active users, and uh, well, we've got uh, more than 50 more than 50 uh, people working for the company. So uh, and and yeah, um, almost uh, no, it's more than half of these are actually working remotely. I'm wondering who needs a time time tracker? People who uh, work remotely? 
who needs a time tracker? That is actually a very, very good question. Uh, that was the one we actually have asked many times uh, over the years. But uh, actually, if we uh, if we look at ourselves, uh, we were actually the prime suspect because uh, we, as a company, when we started, uh, we were the people uh, who were dealing with uh, all uh, kinds of other clients and projects. We uh, obviously we needed to know where the time goes. So actually, uh, Toggle's kind of spe- sweet spot is uh, either. Um, uh, companies or, um, well, professional consultants who need to uh, keep track of the time. Uh, so it doesn't need to be a, a remote, remote um, company at all because we have, uh, for example, we have a couple of very big, uh, um, uh, I think, accounting companies that are mostly like used, uh, they, these, they are using it in mostly in one location. But uh, these are more like, uh, well, Toggle is more like for uh, people who need to uh, uh, hand uh, out either uh, reports at the end of uh, whatever week, month, or, uh, or to know uh, if they're productive enough to be profitable. And that means that uh, it's mostly like uh, companies or uh, uh, freelancers. But there are actually also um, uh, quite many people uh, who are just like using it for the personal purposes. For example, there was one guy who was uh, was building a house by himself, and he checked his time to see uh, how much will it take. Wow! <laughs> uh, yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, it is. Okay, so maybe before we get to the benefits of remote working, how about dispelling some myths? The myth number one is that remote working means that the productivity of your employees will decrease and i wonder what can you tell about it this is actually a pretty pretty hard question because i think this uh, goes actually down to the very person because some people actually strive in the office uh, environment they like to uh, interact with people all the time. They like the uh, water cooler talks. Uh, they like seeing other people's faces and so on. On the other hand, some people uh, actually feel that uh, they can't get any work done in the office. They prefer, for example, coming uh, to the office uh, in the early hours because no one's there and they can get a lot of work done or staying late. Uh, late night shifts uh, to uh, yet an, uh, yet again uh, to have uh, all the work done. So it depends. So I would say that uh, the people who are very lax about the working uh, ethic uh, and uh, well don't like the word job too much. I think uh, for them the productivity decreases when they uh, when they go remote because there are very many. Um, uh, things you could do instead of working, <laughs> but if you're a one uh, with a with a very strong ethic, uh, work ethic, and uh, and uh, uh, you really want to get things done, then actually uh, being remote uh, helps uh, to really focus on uh, on things. Uh, you really focus on uh, what you're working on uh, and uh, to get really, really good results. Mm-hmm. So it, it really depends on uh, on the, the personality of a person. But the other uh, and the the other thing is that if your um, uh, if your um, uh, job uh, needs uh, very much like uh, uh, communication with uh, with people uh, who are well, basically uh, in the office, then I would say that you would probably be better off uh, in the office. But, uh, for example, uh, well, software developers, because we know them very well, software developers actually are prime candidates for being remote because uh, they can really zone off and uh, write some beautiful code and and really, really be productive when the project manager is not like creeping over the shoulder all the time. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. And uh, yeah, the funny fact is that if you want to slack around, then it doesn't matter if you're working remotely on in the office, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And another myth that I hear very often is that remote workers are out of contact and it's not possible or it's very difficult to build that team spirit. And we know how team spirit is important for company culture. So what about the team spirit? Uh, that one actually I believe is not a myth. Uh, I believe this is a serious issue. And uh, this is one of the uh, biggest uh, 
issues we are actually facing ourselves. Uh, because uh, we think that uh, working in Togo, it's actually kind of like a, it's kind of like a close knit community. So um, uh, we really want to get along with it with each other and uh, really uh, work towards the same goal. But that also means that we have to kind of share the same uh, same culture, so to speak. And it's really hard to do that remotely. But uh, how we do that uh, is that we, w whenever we actually get um, uh, a person working for us, uh, we will definitely, uh, first thing, uh, we try to get them over to uh, the main office and have, uh, have, a, have at least a week here and uh, just drag him or her around uh, in the bars <laughs> and have some cool uh, uh, extra work activities. I don't know, uh, for example, last week uh, our uh, guys went uh, for fat biking with, uh, with a new person. And uh, that actually can uh, go a, like a long, long way to, um, to actually fuse the new people into the, uh, into the uh, team. But uh, the other thing is that uh, it doesn't actually end there uh, another, another thing that we, we we try to do all the time is uh, we try to be very um, communicative uh, there's we, we are using slack and there are different channels and uh, and uh, besides the team ones we are there are also like general ones so there's always a chatter going on there and uh, some fun channels I don't know food <laughs> and and movies and and so on so uh, it actually helps to uh, to share uh, all kinds of uh, information and uh, insights which are not work related so this is kind of like what I said earlier kind of like a water cooler talks uh, mm -hmm. But these are like a virtual water cooler talks, and I believe that that these are really, really important to uh, to actually get everyone uh, well thinking the same, mm -hmm. and uh, it helps really with uh, with a company culture. But the other thing is that we we, we always do like uh, we actually have uh, two company wide get togethers each year each year. So we have one uh, actually coming up in in April now, and there's another one coming up in uh, in October. Uh, the April one will be actually held in, in Lisbon, in Portugal. Uh, in October, everyone will be here, uh, back here in, uh, in Tallinn office. And uh, there are also uh, uh, smaller kind of uh, team meetups. So there are either one team uh, only uh, flying out somewhere uh, having uh, some kind of week-long uh, coding or uh, or uh, marketing session, whatever, whatever they have there, or they can be actually uh, kind of like inter-team meetups because uh, there's sometimes really really cool stuff happening there. For example, if you have seen, we have this uh, really cool um, startup unicorn game. If you haven't, uh, check it out. It's on our website as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was done by uh, by uh, our front end and uh, marketing teams uh, over the week long. Uh, uh, team meetup, and uh, that was really, really successful thing. So yes. yeah, it's, it's it needs a lot of work. Uh, it's probably not um, cheap either, <laughs> because the plane tickets still cost money. But it's not uh, it's not as uh, as expensive either. So I think it's really, really good, and uh, it it really helps because people want to work for us and they want to stay with us. And yeah. Um, yeah. I think this is good. The funny thing is that you're talking about the budget because I was to ask you about it because one of the myths is that. But it's cheaper to have a remote team. Uh, yes and no. But uh, I think that uh, even before we start uh, start uh, talking about the uh, the money issues, I would actually touch first the kind of like people issue because. Uh, uh, I don't know how it's in, in uh, bigger countries, but I think it's uh, it's probably the same. But the, here in Estonia, uh, the IT sector is actually really booming. And that means that uh, all the uh, kind of uh, developers uh, who are, well, capable of programming something, they have been already snapped up. And that means that uh, all the uh, salaries and stuff are going up. Um, on the other hand, that means that there is a shortage of skills. 
So uh, for us, it was actually uh, really, really uh, tough when we started growing because we needed more people. We needed good people. And, uh, and there weren't any uh, on our market. So uh, what we did, actually, we, 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 we started doing the tests uh, and, uh, and uh, we actually started doing them globally. And uh, that's really working because right now I think there are, I think there are like some diff- 16 different countries represented in, 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 in total. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's something. Yes. Maybe let's talk about the benefits of remote working. So as I heard, one of the benefits is that, is that you can work with uh, really talented, passionate people from around the world, right? What are the other benefits? Well, the, uh, from, the, from the company standpoint, as I said, that, uh, the biggest one was that we actually uh, broke free from, the, uh, from uh, the confines of our very small markets. Uh, and that meant that we actually uh, we are not like hiring uh, among one million per, uh, persons. We are rather hiring among seven um, billion persons. So that means that we have a lot more uh, uh, options to choose from, and uh, we have uh, really really cool people actually. <laughs> so. Um, Uh, this is like from the com- company standpoint. Uh, from the uh, uh, employee standpoint or the other other people, uh, I would say that uh, yeah, you said the first one, which is uh, cool and talented people, uh, but also uh, a lot of uh, traveling because, uh, uh, as I said earlier, <laughs> there will always be a lot of traveling because we need to get the people together. Uh, but also we are sending them out uh, to conferences and, uh, and workshops and so on because uh, they still need to need to learn and uh, and uh, uh, well be even more cool persons in the future uh, also uh, they, you can uh, work with different cultures because uh, I think the people uh, well European uh, working culture is probably well, somewhat like uh, north-south divided. So I think that the southern people are really interested to see how the northern people work and and so on. Uh, Also people from different continents. Uh, And uh, yeah, in some places, uh, well, our just like the the salaries we are offering uh, are also like global salaries. So in some places, these are very, very good. Uh, salaries for their uh, own local market so there are many uh, many positives I would say okay so I'm wondering how do you hire people to work for you is it is it very difficult well this is a very very good question well actually uh, we have been hiring like uh, as I said we we, we have been around since 2000 so uh, that means that we have been hiring uh, a lot of people and they well it First, it was like very, very traditional. So you just uh, go to uh, some kind of a CV uh, site and scan the CVs and then send in some emails and and be very frustrated when there's no <laughs> no replies and then you get someone and uh, call them to the, to an interview and uh, then it turns out they are just uh, totally unsuitable for you and so on. So it was very, very hard and uh, and we actually uh, well. Did, I don't know, we scanned through, I think, thousands of CVs and so on. And, but uh, the kind of return was very, very poor. And um, then we thought that um, why not do uh, it uh, a bit more clever way? So we actually uh, clobbered together some kind of a, a very, very crude test and put it up in the uh, in web and, uh, and uh, advertised this in our Facebook page. And uh, we actually got one uh, one guy, uh, a very very good uh, front end programmer, who is actually still working for, for us. Uh, uh, and uh, he actually came came along, and we said, "Hey, this is so cool! This is so easy!" So we actually started using this test and uh, uh, online test, and uh, we started um, uh, improving up uh, on it. And uh, now actually we have. Uh, Hired uh, over 20 people with this uh, with this test, mostly remote persons, but also from Estonia as well. So, 
uh, and we haven't actually seen a CV since. Oh, <laughs> it has been nice week <laughs> good for you. Now. And actually, uh, what might be a bit of uh, interesting news is that we actually uh, just uh, spun out this uh, this tool uh, from Toggle, and we actually lo- launched it as a as a new to- new product, which is called Hundred Five, and it will be live in uh, at the end of at the end of April. Is a tool that helps to uh, hire people, right? Yes, exactly. Wow, that's so interesting. And yeah, mostly about... mostly remote people, actually. Yeah, and how about people that can't do tests, like for example, well, content writers, let's say. Uh, we actually have had uh, content writer tests as well. Uh, we did. Kind of like... Oh my god, I'm dying to see it. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if we have one up right now, but we have we've had one at least. Uh, I, th- I think even two. Uh, but the thing is that uh, in, in most of the time, uh, what you want to really know is uh, uh, does the person actually have brains? <laughs> can they can they uh, uh, answer some uh, logic or some kind of like broad questions uh, within a pretty tight time frame? And uh, then, of course, we uh, we check uh, uh, also the kind of portfolios, but only if they uh, if they uh, cross the threshold on the uh, generic questions. So that is actually uh, the beauty of the um, of this uh, uh, this online testing is that uh, you're not uh, checking everyone in detail, but you're only checking the persons who will cross the threshold. So the thresholds are different for, for each test and each position, but uh, there's also always the thing that what we want to do is we want to actually eliminate uh, 95% of the uh, persons who are not really capable of doing that. And we will only deal in person then with the people uh, who are promising. Mm-hmm. But how do you check mindset of those people? Because, you know, uh, your candidates have, can have great skills, but they may not be a good fit for your company. And, you know, when you're working remotely, you need discipline, you know, good organization of job, motivation, I guess. Uh, so how do you check it? Uh, this is actually rather easy because, uh, as I said, that we are only checking very few uh, people who will uh, actually pass the test. Uh, the next hurdle for them is actually uh, an interview uh, with the team lead and uh, most probably someone from the management side as well. Uh, but uh, then we actually want to see them face to face, see uh, how they react to um, maybe provocative uh, questions, uh, what they, uh, how they are communicating, uh, how they're talking, and so on. And uh, if that uh, test uh, or well. Um, meeting uh, goes well, uh, we actually offer them um, a test job, which is a paid job, uh, mostly uh, if it's a developer, then one week of uh, development uh, issues will just pay for that week. If it's a marketing person, for example, there might be a couple of days working on some kind of a small project and trying to come up with uh, with uh, with text or uh, or I don't know, Google AdWords stuff, uh, or whatever, whatever we need at this point. But the thing is that we we uh, let them do something that we actually need. This is not virtual. This is like really needed stuff, and they are working on actual uh, tasks uh, for us. And. Uh, uh, the team lead uh, definitely will have a look. Uh, most of the times when we are dealing with uh, developers, uh, also the developers will have a look uh, because uh, it's it's very easy to check it out because if you see the pull requests and uh, you can you can go over the code and so on. And that actually will tell you uh, if the person is, um, uh, is uh, well, as you said, they need a very good work discipline, uh, they need a very good work, work ethics, and uh, they also need to have a good uh, communication skills because they are remote. And uh, you, you can actually see that uh, very clearly uh, with this one-week test job. Mm-hmm. Awesome. awesome. And, okay, so when you have uh, your team, how is it possible to keep it all together running smoothly? Uh, It's it's easier to actually uh, think in small bits, so it's easy to uh, actually make work uh, one uh, one team smoothly, because these are smaller. Uh, 
and then you can uh, when the one team is working smoothly you can then uh, start like uh, putting them uh, together with uh, with other teams but i think that uh, as i said before that these kind of like water cooler talks and stuff these are very very good things uh, to have and uh, we actually have uh, one uh, i think a really cool uh, initiative in in company uh, on every thursday at uh, well four o'clock in half an hour we will have um, we will have this kind of like a, a presentation or or a dialogue kind of um, a video conference uh, there will be uh, different persons every every week uh, talking and they're mostly talking about uh, stuff they've done or about themselves so that uh, or, or about their hobbies or something like that, which is totally different than the, the things they do uh, at work every day. And that means that uh, the all the people can actually get to know them better. And, uh, and there have been actually a lot of people who have found kind of like uh, uh, similar minded uh, uh, people from the team uh, working in, for example, in other, uh, other, other teams as well. And um, I think this works great. And it, it sounds like a lovely idea as well. But what if it happens that you have an introvert? Well, we do have these ones as well. <laughs> <laughs> these ones? <laughs> yeah, Estonians are very, well, most of them are notoriously introverted. Uh, Finns as well. Well, all the kind of Nordic people are. But uh, they still have something. For example, one of our fin uh, Finnish guys, he actually had, had a talk about uh, the dog shows. Because he is uh, <laughs> actually uh, he's attending the dog shows because he has a, a, a dog as well, and so he attends them and so on. So it's 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 interesting to hear about that. One one other guy who's also quite introverted. He he actually uh, had a talk about uh, game development and how do you develop games and then how you can market the games and so on. So it's 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 rather interesting because uh, there are many uh, uh, many different people. Uh, working in Toggle, and it's actually interesting how uh, how different their uh, their hobbies are. Uh. And okay, and one of the last questions uh, because we're talking for almost half of hour. Uh, can you tell me which, which apps do you use that can help you to manage your team? Well, yeah, Slack for the uh, inter-team communication, uh, which is very, very important. There are already like several, <laughs> several uh, conversations ongoing that demand my attention. Uh, we're actually using Google uh, Google Docs a lot because uh, we actually generate quite a lot of documents and stuff that we don't want to put into the into GitHub accounts, so we just share them in Docs. Uh, we also use calendars uh, to, uh, like Google Calendar, to uh, to uh, sort out the meetings. Uh, we also use Team Week. This that's another product of ours. Uh, yeah, and that's actually uh, if you go to teamweek.com, uh, uh, it's uh, it's for planning uh, kind of uh, like a lot of, like. Um, we call it helicopter view planning and it's uh, helping to uh, to plan your team members uh, tasks for a longer time it's not very detailed but it's more like uh, someone is working on this project for next couple of weeks and then they will be sw switching to another project for three weeks and so on so it's kind of like a very very broad broad uh, broad planning tool um, and we also use trello a lot because um, uh, well, uh, Trello is a very good uh, place to put uh, very generic ideas and for brainstorming. And uh, GitHub, of course, because we're a product company or development company, so we, we use GitHub a lot. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, so the last question. Can you just share your thoughts about remote, remote working and the most important things that, in your opinion, our listeners should know? I think that the uh, the most important uh, thing for company owners or people who uh, seek employees is to actually, as I said, is to uh, stop thinking in uh, in local market terms, but uh, more like uh, I think in global terms. And that means that you will get a lot more people. Uh, of course, it doesn't it does mean that you can't do this kind of like a CV based. Uh, 
CV-based hiring because that doesn't work. But as I said before, we have a new product called 105 that's coming up and uh, you can actually uh, do uh, these tests like we have done for three years now very successfully. Uh, from the uh, from the employee standpoint, I would say that, um, uh, well, we have already actually covered most of the points, but I think for uh, like uh, working for, uh, for uh, companies in different countries is actually very refreshing. You will really learn a lot about uh, different cultures. Uh, you'll meet uh, with uh, very different people and uh, I think that uh, these actually uh, help to uh, perform better uh, in, in future as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much then and thanks for the chat. Yes, thank you. Business Sidekick. That's all in today's Business Sidekick. I hope that you know much more about hiring and managing a remote team. The next episode will be published next week. And in the meantime, you can check other Business Sidekick episodes on livechatinc.com slash podcast. Don't forget to give me five stars in iTunes if you like this show. Take care. Bye-bye. This podcast was brought to you by Lifetime. Lifetime. Lifetime.